now it's time to get down and dirty on your back. I've got a crawler board here and it's nice and wet. We know this is leaking and uh, we've ascertained that there is an oil leak at the top. So looking where the oil has drained from, it's quite evident that it's come from the top end, from somewhere. And what's also very interesting is the flywheel housing here, mating 300 TDI to the gearbox, the LT77 gearbox. This is actually off a naturally aspirated diesel and it works. You could find worse, I've seen worse. Um, what happens here though, it leaves the strengthening webs of the 300 TDI redundant. You can see this up here, something to look out for. Front axle we're going to lift up first, uh, have a look, the condition, the brakes, um, the kingpin play and the wheel bearings possibly. First things first, handbrake needs to come off and the wheels need to be chocked so it doesn't roll anywhere. We don't need axle stands on this because we won't be climbing underneath the vehicle with the wheels off. Wheels straight first of all, and I'm going to use my bar. Using a bar in this way I can check the play on the king pin or the swivel pins and the wheel bearing. And um, You need to have a good inspection around here, give you an idea of what the tyres are like. Uh, have a glance around, see what the uh, swivel pins housing is like. And Generally it's having a feel. With a Land Rover you cannot spin the wheels to hear if the bearings are rumbling because the drive shafts are connected, it's impossible. I look at the tyres generally on a service inspection to see what sort of wear they have, if there's anything unusual or the tracking's badly out. Same on this side, have a lift, bearings all right on this side, the other side had play in it. You can probably see the side to side movement on this can you? If there's any excessive wear it will uh, show up by uh, looking in this manner. Key point here is to see if there's anything worn, leaking or out of place, or even loose. Things you should pay attention to are uh, damage, like on uh, this split track rod end gator, compared to this one, which is in very good condition. Uh, the calipers, the pads, the thickness of the pads, whether there's any oil leaks. And uh, turning the wheel while laying on your back, you can look at the inside, um, see whether the discs are in good condition, the condition of the tyres. Discs aren't too bad on this one. Calipers here don't seem to be a part of the original equipment that was with the vehicle when it was first made. CV or the swivel pin housing um, corroded and on this side the seal's leaking. This is very much a weak spot on the Land Rover front axle. Sooner or later the seals are going to need doing, uh, the swivel pin housing is going to need doing or the uh, pins shimming up. Fender bushes on the radius arms are uh, usually quite soft but you're looking for things like excessive play or the fact that it would be clunking. Panard rod bushes are worth checking see if they're square in there. Bottom of the axle banjo you can see here has actually been ground out and dented. Further checking the suspension the shock absorbers visually check them or you can twist them to see if they're loose. If there is any sign of wear that the bush is worn it will be evident around the washers here. Mindful as well on this exhaust it's been modified and welded by hand and on this part here it's split and it's blowing. Brake pipes, they've been uh, homemade but they're in fairly good condition and it's been homemade all the way through by looking on the rear axle, things to look out for, how it's been attached to the rear axle, whether they're chafing on the axle. It's worth checking the rear bump stops uh, to see whether they're present or not. If they're not there they've either dropped off or been knocked off by being overloaded. Backlash on the uh, diff you can see there's a fair bit there. This gives you an indication of the amount of uh, wear or backlash in between the crown and the pinion. A good check is to grab the prop shaft by the yoke here, push it upwards to see if there's any bearing play on the pinion. Checking the prop shaft on the slider is you can see that it's got play in here so that's worn and it's no good. It shouldn't have any play whereas um, the joints here all right they've got play they're knackered and this front one here as well is absolutely knackered. That accounts for the clunking when I was taking up the drive. The rear axle is a Salisbury heavy duty axle which is a heavier weight axle than what you'd find on the uh, 90s. The VIN plate will tell you this. I'm not going to be jacking this up because I'll be expected to strip the brakes out and check the bearings anyway. This axle is actually on brake drums and it has backing plates. You can see down the bottom there the backing plate is rotten so they'll need replacing. 
and usually a hub seal will leak into the backing plate on the rear and this one the hub seal is leaking so we know we'll have to strip these out anyway. The A-frame ball joint also needs checking. What I'm doing is getting the bar in here and lifting it up to see how much play is present. This one's in good condition. There are more faults on this and there are more places to look but in general that's about it for underneath. What I'm not going to do is uh, bother with the steering box because it's leaking anyway. Okay so we've had a once around. Now's the time to make a good list up and have a think about exactly what we're going to do with this vehicle. In previous episodes of this guide we had a look at how this uh, vehicle was put together and we've already seen how uh, not very well the engine and the piping has been put together. Also seen that it's uh, been bodged at the top end like this filter. Bodywork isn't exactly brilliant and there is corrosion. It is a high mileage motor but however we're not going to pay attention to that. The aim of this guide is to give you an insight into how much there is to look at on a vehicle and this is a prime example of what needs a lot of loving to bring it back onto the road. Unlike any of the other Land Rover products, the Land Rover Defender is fully restorable. I don't know what impressions you've had of this vehicle so far looking at the series and I'm fully aware that it needs a lot of time and a lot of expense put into it. But compared to what can be achieved, and Mario's proved this, we'll uh, see this in a, a later video. It's possibly worth justifying the cost to do this. The next job to do is to uh, go onto a paddock website, have a look at the prices, do some pricing up of the parts and then we'll know where we're at. We turned our attention to the VIN number and it turns out that this vehicle had a 2.5 or a 12J engine with a Series 3 four speed part time four wheel drive combination gearbox and transfer box it's interesting what has turned up but we can't as yet confirm that this is one of the earliest defenders that's came off the production line so even after about 10 minutes internet searching we found out quite a lot of details about this vehicle and what i can't emphasize enough is the uh, need for research if you're going to buy something on ebay and this is especially directed at people from the uh, states united states of america research the history of the vehicle as well and what the vehicles look like in here is a 1980 Defender well I don't need to go any further to tell you that 1983 was when the Defenders first came out so there's something wrong here the VIN number is the first place to start and the components obviously they get changed because that's the nature of the Land Rover but you need to know what type of vehicle it is and what application it was made for because the VIN plate will tell you this it's vital Anyway, getting back to uh, our specific vehicle and the components that we had and got the numbers off. The uh, LT77 gearbox, which has a D suffix, is not exactly one of Land Rover's strongest LT77 gearboxes. The transfer box with the uh, first three digits 12D, we found out there's 1.667 to 1 ratio, which is a very low ratio transfer box. This, of course, is the LT230, and we'll have to thank... Ashcroft transmission for this information which can be found on their website. So if you're interested in uh, checking out your own VIN number we do have a resource there and it's on our blog. Check it out, click on the link and uh, go through and then you can uh, use the resources that we've been using. Mm -hmm.